Welcome, and thank you for joining this session on powering telecommunications architecture evolution beyond 5G and Edge. My name is Owen Law. I work as a senior partner solutions architect in AWS, focusing on the telecom vertical across APJ and supporting telecom ecosystem partners and customers in the region. Telecom is very close to my heart as I have worked in various roles across the industry for the last 17 years. I want to take this time today to share with you some of the key observations and considerations of how telecom customers have successfully embraced and benefit from their cloud adoption and how AWS and partners have enabled those outcomes. There are four main topics we'll cover today. First, we'll start by looking at business outcomes telecom customers have achieved on AWS. Then we will zoom into the telecom use case that drive those outcomes, identify the key challenges, and how AWS has enabled those use cases. Next, we will zoom into architecture considerations and key enabling AWS services, leading to an end-to-end -end telecom architecture on AWS. And finally, we will conclude by looking at example realization pathways from some of our telecom customers, how they have started, how they progressed their cloud adoption. When we analyze the top of mind business outcomes heard from these telco customers, we observe a number of strategic priorities that are related. First is a strong desire to diversify the revenue base from pure connectivity offerings by expanding the ecosystem partnerships into cloud services, especially in support for 5G and edge computing solutions. For telcos to be successful in selling cloud-related services, they need to build up internal competencies, mature their internal use of the cloud, and start adopting this for the digital stack. The third outcome is beyond IT and digital stack, telcos are also highly motivated to reduce cost per bit for the infrastructure and establish more supplier diversity. Hence, there's very strong interest in cloud economics and cloud consumption model. Last but not least, is the continuous focus on improving customer experience, embedding cloud analytics and AI ML services in their business process. We have strong belief that across all these outcomes, cloud plays a pivotal role. The numbers actually back up these observations. On the partnership go-to-market front, there's clear momentum, as there are more than 50 globally announced partnerships between telcos and cloud providers in the last 18 months. We see a growing adoption of enterprise IT workloads into the cloud and ongoing momentum for critical system like BSS, OSS moving to the cloud. This is evident by growing supplier readiness with 20% of OSS suppliers already transitioned their solution to cloud. We also acknowledge there are inertia, especially for core network workloads, as we continue to observe significant spending in excess of $100 billion globally into what's considered on-prem telco cloud from now until 2025. Another key ask from our telco customer is their desire for seamless experience across a hybrid environment. The nature of the telecom infrastructure is such that there are bound to be significant amount of assets and workloads remaining on-prem. As such, this is a clear ask by many of our telco customers. How can they minimize the discrepancies between deploying and operating workloads on-prem versus doing so on AWS? They are asking this question from the angles of reliability, operational consistency, having the same APIs and tools, and they also want to benefit from the same service capabilities and level of innovation in the cloud. In responding to these needs, we have developed a specific engagement model for our telecom customers. The model starts with security as the foundation, helping telcos establish a cloud security framework to ensure they have the right security posture and governance approach for new workloads moving to the cloud. This is followed by supporting them on a cross-functional data strategy to ensure there's an efficient way for ingesting data for multiple teams and projects to make use of the same data. Upon building these security and data foundations, we see artificial intelligence and machine learning services 
playing a critical role in enabling different use cases. The engagement model has four focus solution areas, starting from the left, customer experience transformation focused on modernizing customer interaction systems such as CRM, omnichannels, and contact center. Up at the top, IT cloud transformation focus on migrating enterprise IT workload and data center consolidation. On the right, telco cloud transformation focus on working with network vendors and bringing AWS cloud services to telco's distributed edge location in support of network workloads. There's also a strong focus on enabling end-to-end -end automation and orchestration of the network. Last but not least is the BSS OSS transformation, which focus on enabling partner ISVs to implement cloud native architecture on AWS. So what are the tangible outcomes our telecom customers have achieved on AWS? The first example is accelerating their time to market. For example, Globe Telecom in Philippines have successfully and quickly launched an all-digital business platform on AWS in support for their digital brand, GOMO. A second example is successful digitization of core BSS functions, including billing, catalog, and revenue management platforms, leading to much better IT velocity, such as the case shown here with Vodafone Germany and T-Mobile Netherlands below. The third example is intelligent operations. We have customers like British Telecom OpenReach, who is leveraging AWS analytics and machine learning services, and they have embedded these into their business process to optimize their customer journey. Finally, we have customers that are leveraging AWS to drive disruptive innovation, as in the case of Telefonica Germany, who is taking their 5G core onto AWS to support enterprise private network use case. There are actually many more possible use cases AWS and our partners have jointly delivered to telco customers. This table is just a glimpse of possible use cases. It's certainly not an exhaustive list, but will provide a good idea of what's been done before and what's possible. What we'll do for the rest of this session is to zoom into the highlighted use case key outcomes achieved, and their realization. For the next couple of slides, we will take a simple work backwards approach to illustrate how many of these use cases are linked and how it relates to different telecom solution areas. We can take a look at four different use cases across four solution areas. For each of these, we'll focus on business outcomes, the key challenges, and the AWS enablers. We will leave the detailed technical enabler discussion into the next session when we talk about the architecture. Telecom industry have long faced challenges with less than stellar network promoter score, NPS. Telcos have invested heavily to address that by working towards a fully self-serve, consistent experience for their B2B or B2C end customers and deliver that across multiple channels. They've also tried to be proactive in communicating the actual network service experience and to make personalized proactive offer for those end customers. But to actually achieve this will require a holistic view of the customer via quality data from a variety of data source. This includes information from direct interaction with the customers, external feedback such as social media, transaction records and contacts from backend BSS OSS platform, and real-time insights from the network. Telcos have been trying to achieve this in non-cloud environments, but they face many challenges, such as limited storage and processing capacity, data silos, and limited access to AI ML capabilities on-prem. Plus, many of the telco customer rep often lack access to any of these data. From an AWS perspective, we help many telco customers overcome these challenges via our analytics, AI, ML, and customer engagement solutions. It's not just the services that we provide. In many of these engagements, we also offered tailored enablement workshops and ability to bring in local integration partners if needed 
to help telco customer make use of the technology. Well, having the right data architecture is just the first step. Whether it's product selection or service activation or billing queries, it's very well known that telecom industry have a very complex customer journey and complex back-end BSS OSS platform implementation. Many of our telco customers have either started or plan to embark on modernizing their BSS OSS backend. In modernizing these platforms, they look to move away from monolithic architecture, move to decoupled designs, which separates core telco business logic from a few large pieces of software and distribute them across multiple smaller modules. Breaking into smaller components will also result in more flexibility in choosing best of breed solution, as we have also seen very strong take up of software as a service offering, such as CRM, ERP, or marketing cloud solution. In traditional on-prem environment, these platforms are often implemented within its own monolithic stack, with its own hardware and tooling, and there are heavy customization at the software layer. And it's notoriously known that multi-vendor integration is very difficult. We will dive deeper into the technical enablers in the next session. But fundamentally, our approach is to work closely with our BSS OSS partner and help them progressively modernize their implementation on AWS. Many of them might start with a simple lift and shift solution. But as they work closer with our partner solutions architect, they can learn from best practice. They can learn how to right size, cost optimize their solution to become more cloud native over time. The next layer of use case touches upon the actual network and infrastructure assets. This is the crux of the business problem for our telco customers, since this remains their biggest investment area. Our telco customers have very strong desire to reduce cost per bit. And they also desire a highly automated lifecycle operations for the network infrastructure resource. The current challenge they have is mainly driven by the heterogeneous nature of the infrastructure environment. They have many different network domains provided by different suppliers, each with their own technology stack, with very little sharing of tools and operation approach across these domains. And anytime they introduce a new technology or try to launch a new service, this is typically require massive upfront capex investment with little certainty in business return. All these issues came into the forefront during 5G investments, and AWS have been helping many telco customers embark on transforming the network infrastructure using AWS Cloud to Edge service. We have been very intentional and worked very closely with leading network equipment vendors to onboard their solution onto AWS. And we've also worked with a variety of service orchestration vendors to onboard and integrate their solution with AWS API and native AWS services. What we believe is by expanding this ecosystem of partners and onboard different types of network workloads, we actually leverage cloud as a de facto platform to drive commonality across domains while bringing cloud economies of scales and benefits like on-demand usage to enable move towards an OPEX model. Being able to select from a dynamic collection of offering is another key custom experience Telco wants to deliver. Particularly for B2B enterprise customers, there's a growing demand to consume not just connectivity service from the Telco, but other digital service from third party provider as well. For example, a customer might want video analytics as a service for a connected factory. This actually means if the telco wants to capture these ICT type revenue, they need the ability to onboard new partner solutions quickly. They need a multi-tenancy model in the back end to support a variety of partners and a way to package these third party solutions with their own solution into solution bundles. Today, this is a pain point for most telcos in the current environment, because many of them actually lack third-party onboarding capabilities, and they lack development skills on cloud. 
AWS have worked closely with a number of digital business platform vendors to help telco set up these digital business platform or digital marketplace and to develop these third-party onboarding capabilities. Many of these platforms have out-of-the-box integration with AWS Marketplace, a platform offered by AWS which holds thousands of ISV solutions with pre-built solutions, and all these can be incorporated into the telco solution bundle. Beyond enabling the technology stack, AWS also works closely with the telco through training and enablement, and we offer specific partner programs to help them grow their cloud competencies in areas such as consultancy, migration, and specialized workloads. Our ultimate goal is to progressively enable the telco as go-to-market partners so they can go from offering basic cloud service or resale white-label solutions to doing more complex solutions such as private network for industry verticals, app modernization, or large-scale migration to the cloud. So we want to build upon this use case and apply the AWS Well Architected Framework. The reason why we want to do that is we want to go from individual use case to a set of reusable architecture. The AWS Well Architected Framework is comprised of five pillars, operational excellence, security, performance efficiency, cost optimization. The AWS Well Architected Framework is adopted by thousands of customers across many different industries. And it is a great way of helping our telco ecosystem partners and customers to have a consistent, scalable approach to evaluate architectures and implement solution designs at a high standard. Here, we will take the five key pillars, examine them against typical telco architecture considerations, and then we'll translate how it's done on AWS. For example, we take reliability, and our telco customers often have five nines requirement. In an on-prem environment, this is realized by pre-provisioning double amount of capacity both locally and across data centers. On AWS, we can leverage multi-availability zone, multi-region, and decoupled design patterns and only request for capacity when needed. If we take the performance pillar, a typical design goal for telco's on-prem solution is to get the highest bits per second per network element or deploy maximum amount of compute and storage density per data center, even though average utilization may be less than 30%. On AWS, there's a wide variety of compute instance type available to match against different workloads. And it's possible to leverage patterns such as auto-scaling, horizontal scaling to acquire capacity when needed and pay for actual on-demand usage instead. We're going to leverage this concept as we go through free use case architecture in the following. A key objective of Telecom Customer 360 architecture is to build it once and use it to service multiple use cases for both internal and external consumption. Central to this approach is S3 as an object store to establish a central data repository for storing internal, external, structured, and unstructured data. And this could include network logs, core detail records, service inventory, and social media data. Given that many of these data sources will remain on-prem, we can leverage AWS Transfer Family for bulk transfer and Amazon Kinesis for real-time data ingestion. Also considering the diverse data source and the huge amount of data involved, lake formation can be used to orchestrate data flows, invoke AWS glue jobs that ingest, cleanse, transform, and catalog these data as required with the objective of making sure that the most up-to-date data reside in the data repository. And once this foundation at the data management layer is established, we can leverage services like Amazon Neptune, which is a managed graph database solution, or other AWS managed database in order to model complex relationship between customer and their journey and the journey states. 
And we can also use this to uncover hidden insights about the customer. The result is a consistent, connected view of the customer, which can be used by North Bank or South Bank, BSSO as a system, or fed into other purpose-built data stores, such as Amazon EMR or Amazon Redshift for further use case processing. This customer view can be iteratively enhanced via the use of Amazon SageMaker and other managed machine learning services such as Amazon Forecast in order to predict customers' intent and to derive proactive recommendations. At the activation layer, this 360 view of the customer can also support automated customer interaction via services such as Amazon Pinpoint and Amazon Personalize, or integrate with external SaaS solution, for example, ServiceNow and Salesforce. We have many reference telco customers that are building the customer engagement platform with call center and chatbot solution based on Amazon Connect and Amazon Lex. As such, the 360 view can also be fed into these engagement platforms to improve their effectiveness. A key goal of the BSS OSS architecture on AWS is to drive more repeatable patterns between components. While there are many types of BSS or OSS components, we observe some similar patterns across these workloads, and they often comprise of a business transaction processing layer, which can be implemented on EC2 instance or container services. There's also a core telco business logic layer, which is fairly domain specific. For example, the logic to you know, model broadband service or the logic to do mobile SIM card service provisioning. These layers are best suited to take advantage of EC2 auto scaling or leverage EKS auto cluster group deployed in a multi availability pattern. We also focus on storage decoupling as very often lift and shift BSS OSS applications on prem are built with oversized storage. But on AWS, there's an opportunity to significantly optimize storage costs by moving to object storage and archives, especially for data such as core detail records or performance logs. Another key modernization area is the database layer, which stores subscriber and service states. Many of our partners are highly motivated to move away from expensive proprietary database into open source database solution managed by AWS, such as RDS and Aurora. Another key aspect is data movement between BSS and OSS subcomponents. Again, a great example where many of our partners are already using open source tools and embrace moving to AWS managed offerings such as Elasticsearch and managed Kafka. The final point to highlight is external integration. As we have said, there are more and more adoption of SaaS service, as well as growing importance of third-party ecosystem integration. That means this layer actually needs to tailor for multi-tenancy and needs to be event-driven. And we have seen many of our BSS OSS partner leverage services like AWS API Gateway, AWS Step Function, and AWS Lambda to implement flexible integration flow with external subsystems. Telecom network architecture is highly distributed by nature, especially where terabits of traffic are traversing the network. It just doesn't make sense to centrally backhaul these into one or two locations. This is where we want to leverage the AWS cloud to edge continuum of services. If you look at the slide starting from the right, our foundation starts from our global region services. Every one of our regions is built with multiple resilient availability zones. And we continue to encourage our telco customers to leverage the region whenever possible. We're also bringing AWS infrastructure closer to selected large metro population centers via AWS local zones. Specifically for 5G connected devices and users, we have AWS Wavelength, which is essentially AWS Cloud extended to the mobile edge, delivered in conjunction with mobile operators as partners 
to enable low latency end user applications. We also acknowledge that many enterprise, telcos themselves include, have requirements to run workload on-prem or in telco data center or exchange. This is where AWS Outpost, a fully managed cloud infrastructure and service platform, can be deployed on-prem to support things like virtualized network workloads. We also acknowledge there are additional edge requirements such as ruckedized or disconnected location, which can be supported by AWS Node Family, which are compact form factor, compute, and storage platform. In many telecom use cases, there's also need for IoT services to run in microcontrollers and on IoT gateways, and these are supported by our IoT suite of services. And finally, as recently as last year at reInvent, we also launched new container services such as EKS Distro and EKS Anywhere, with the objective of bringing our EKS service experience to locations where it's needed. So here's a component level depiction of what a telecom architecture looks like on AWS. This definition is aligned to the TM Forum Open Digital Architecture. In this case, we dissect the various telecom system into a couple categories mapped into its AWS enablers. For example, system of engagements that are customer facing, system of insights which focus on analytics, system of records which includes inventory and product catalogs. This is supported by horizontal capabilities across network infrastructure, shared platforms, and system of trust, which is responsible for identity and access management. As we have illustrated on this architecture, we're working hand in hand with many of our ecosystem partners, supplementing their domain-specific expertise in specialized systems such as billing or charging or service assurance with our AWS enabling services. A critical benefit of this architecture is that this is not just applicable to one workload, but it works across a spectrum of telecom workloads. And when you think about the holistic outcome, this actually yields significant benefits in terms of being able to share tools, share team resource, centralize governments, and achieve cost synergies across a whole bunch of BSS, OSS, and network and digital workloads. Here, we bring all the elements together into an end-to-end -end telecom architecture on AWS. Note that this is not a detailed deployment design, but a layered representation of the key use case we've discussed. There's a couple areas we see how this architecture can evolve going forward. The first area starts from the top, which is around the proliferation of self-service transaction and event business-driven business flow, leading to increased adoption of service architecture pattern and also increased adoption of managed cloud services for BSS OSS workload. The second area is we continue to see an important and strong focus of integrating with on-prem workload and on-prem data source. The third area is it's becoming more clear that there is more of a distinct decoupling of telco-specific business logic, such as you know, the business logic in 5G core in BSS OSS system and in telco-specific machine learning models. And it is the decoupling of this specific telco business logic from generic shared platform capabilities that we are observing. Finally, we are definitely anticipating further distribution towards the edge, especially with momentum in this industry in areas like open RAN and private network deployment. We're really just at the beginning of this evolution, and we look forward to ongoing collaboration with the industry to further evolve. If we take a step back from the technology and architecture, many of our telco customers have asked us, how do we get started? Obviously, a lot of telco have started with a specific use case or a specific business need, and they managed to get immediate results. But the more successful telco customers have approached this in a progressive fashion. Here's a very simplified version of a cloud evolution blueprint. 
start from the left, which is the security framework as the first step. The next step is to set up a cloud center of excellence, bringing together cloud skill set under one roof. And this is followed by a telco domain-specific application landscape analysis to understand what type of workload will really benefit from moving to the cloud. The following two steps are related to setting a foundation on AWS, what we refer to as a landing zone in AWS, which include multi-account setup, network interconnect, and so on. When these foundations are in place, the telco can focus on specific workload design and migration, and able to scale very quickly from there. If we look at some real-world examples of how our telco customers have started, the most common starting point is just take their non-production development testing workload onto the cloud. This can be for order management platform, billing platform, and we're also seeing interest from customers in running disaster recovery on AWS for even mission critical platforms like charging. A key benefit of this is on-demand pricing. We also have customers migrate very specific module of the BSS OSS stack. They might do this to address a, a lifecycle refresh or a capacity limit on-prem. This is where customers usually demand for a more modernized approach as opposed to just lift and shift of the workload. And we've been working very closely with BSS OSS vendors to achieve that. Another example is a full stack digital, full digital stack deployment, but potentially for a more tailored, smaller group, such as launching of a sub-brand or launching of a wholesale platform. We've also supported customers on a more holistic transformation journey, transforming both the customer-facing system, the customer experience, as well as back-end supporting system in a large-scale project. Last but not least, we are actually working with many telcos to help them incubate, explore new network transformation use case. Starting point for this typically starts with running prototypes of you know, core workloads in the region. And depending on the use case, they can distribute those solutions onto platforms such as AWS Outposts and AWS No Family. As we are coming to a close, I want to summarize the key points we've shared in this session. The first one is, well, telcos have achieved a very diverse set of business outcome that goes far beyond just traditional IT hosting on AWS. If you're not aware of those possibilities before this session, I hope you have learned something new and gained some additional insights. The second one is we continue to work closely with our partners and customers to evolve the telecom architecture on AWS. And that's achieved by bringing AWS enablers to support our partner solution. The third one is Successful telco often adopt a progressive approach, building in-house competencies with a clear understanding of the application landscape before they go for scale adoption. Well, I hope it's been a useful session for you, and I want to leave you with a collection of AWS telecom-related resources, which include white papers and blog posts across many of the topics I touched upon today. If you're keen to accelerate your journey on the cloud, Find out more about our AWS training and certification resource at aws.com slash training. Thank you for attending this session. I hope you have enjoyed the session, and I'm sure you will enjoy all the other sessions we have prepared for you during the summit. Before I leave you to it, I would greatly appreciate if you can fill out the feedback form so we can learn from you and continue to improve. Thank you.